everyone. Welcome to Wine.com Experiences. I'm Gwendolyn Osborne. Today we are celebrating Earth Day and with that tasting three incredible wines uh, that represent earth-friendly practices and the future of sustainability in the wine industry. If you purchase this trio of wines from Wine.com beforehand, fantastic. Please go ahead and get those open, get them into some glassware if you can. Uh, if you don't have the wines, no problem. This is still gonna be a fantastic show. The wines are delicious though, and the trio is still available on Wine.com should you want to purchase it. Just sit. And uh, of course, this video always lives on on our Wine.com YouTube channel. So what are we tasting? Here we are, we are tasting the Iron Horse Ocean Reserve Sparkling Wine, uh, followed by Yilin's Marlboro Pinot Noir, and we will finish off with Chateau Maris La Toge uh, red wine from the south of France. So delicious wines, uh, three continents, and um, all again, really happy planet wine. So uh, let's introduce our guests. From Iron Horse, we have CEO Joy Sterling, as well as winemaker Sofiane Himura. Uh, from Yilin's, chief winemaker Natalie Christensen will be here. And from Chateau Maris in France, we welcome co-owner and winemaker Robert Eden. So welcome to everyone. Sofiane, thank you for being here. Hello. Thank you for having us. Everyone else is trickling in. <laughs> um, hello, Natalie, Matt, hello. Robert. Good evening. And, um, I'll get joy in a second. Um, but thank you all so much for being here. Really grateful for your time. Um, Robert, I know it's late night for you, so um, definitely um, appreciate that coming in. So, um, yeah, so so Earth Day, I, I wanted to start with Joy. I don't see her yet, though, because I know she's on a, an Earth Day time crunch, um, traveling the globe as we are going on. So um, I'm hoping that she'll pop in in a moment, but... Um, Yes, yeah, so I guess, well, we can start with, uh, Sophia, maybe you can tell us a little I'm, bit about I'm where sorry. Iron Horse is located before she gets here. Where are you and how is that helpful? Oh, Sophia left too. We're having some technical difficulties. Oh, there you are. Hello. Okay. Phew. So, oops. For some reason, it keeps going off, but I just oh, want Joy, to say, if we can hear you, that is wonderful. As beautiful as you, you are, I still just want to hear the story. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry because I have beautiful lilac. I know you have lilac. Colors, but um, it just doesn't want to go on. Um, anyway, well, the um, Iron Horse is in Green Valley. So how perfect. Or. Earth Day. I'm just going to finish your sentence. So how perfect for Earth Day to have somewhere in Green Valley because green is part of, of the earth. Um, so Sophia, maybe you can kind of tell us a little about the Green Valley if, if she can't get back and why that's so such a wonderful spot. Oh, it's a wonderful spot. So we're about 13 miles uh, as a bird, uh, as a crow flies from the ocean. Um, so perfect for growing Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in our region. Um, we have fog, foggy mornings, which is great for the climate, and then warm days. And so great balance for acidity in, in the grapes, um, days, cool nights. And um, it's just a beautiful place to be in the Sonoma Valley. Um, I, I remember the first time I went there, I was um, amazed. Um, and, and, you know, we um, try really hard and, and do the best we can with what we have, but um, in my winemaking experience, as far as in the United States, it's the perfect spot to do what we do, and, and that's sparkling wine and, and Chardonnay and Pinot Noirs. And I will, um, since Joy isn't here, I have visited Iron Horse. I've known Joy for like 15 years, so I'm just going to step in. Um, I'm not obviously as well versed as she is, but um, you know, Iron Horse was started by her parents, Barry and Audrey Sterling. Um, after visiting France quite a few times, they really fell in love with both wine and, um, you know, in Sophia, I'm just jump in if I'm, I'm missing anything, but um, created Iron Horse with the goal of, of sparkling wine in this very um, cool climate and, and came out to do that. And Barry was a lawyer by trade um, from, from Stanford going, you know, with, you know, Sandra Day O'Connor and William Ryan Quest hanging out with those folks. Um, so this passion for wine came, came out with them um, in the Green Valley. So, um, I mean, it's a beautiful winery. And what I love about Iron Horse too is one is, often in the White House, right? Because it's an American sparkling wine and um, 
kind of one of the histories of it is over the years, they've created cuvées to kind of mark occasions or causes. Um, and so this is the Ocean Reserve, which um, obviously if, if you have the bottle, um, great. If you don't, this bottle is beautiful. It, um, it's Ocean Reserve. It has a part of, it has a National Geographic label. So Sophie, could you tell us a little bit about the, the cause that this wine yeah. is produced for and goes to? Yeah, so um, this, this wine, uh, uh, became a friendship before the wine was actually conceptualized. Um, Audrey and Barry were in an event in Chicago and uh, they sat at a table and they sat next to Gil Gro Grosvenor, um, who's the chairman emeritus of National Geographic, also direct descendant of Alexander Graham Bell. And they started discussing things and Audrey Sterling and Gil came to a conversation and started talking about their birthday. And it ends up, they both had the same exact birthday, same year, same day. And that's May 5th. So they'll both be celebrating their 90th this year. And so that um, encounter led into a friendship. And then Joy had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. a couple of years later and sat with the family of the National Geographic um, family and um, just told them, you know, hey, why don't we make a cuvee for you? And they just said, absolutely. Like, would you really do that for us? And so we do, and so what we do, it's it's a blonde to blonde that we um, that we make spe specifically for them. And what we do is four dollars of every bottle sold goes back to National Geographic, and in particular um, to marine wildlife and sustainable fishing. Yeah, and that's fantastic. And that says that on the bottle, and that's why the the label is just it's so pretty and it's so beautiful and. Um, as Joy was saying before, when her camera was working earlier, I was talking about, well, you know, we're talking about this earth that is, you know, 70% water, right? So making sure that we protect that and take care of that is really important. And so that's, that's a wonderful thing that this is, this is giving back. And I know that um, Iron Horse has sustainable practices throughout Green Valley being very cool. You're working with Pinot Noir and Chardonnay for this. This is 100% Chardonnay, right? 100% Chardonnay, yes. 100% Chardonnay. So um so yeah, I was gonna ask about the blends and I realized, oh, it's Blanc de Blanc, never mind. <laughs> so it said 100% Chardonnay. So Chardonnay and Green Valley. Um, um, so what, um, what kind of, um, sorry, maybe you can talk us through the flavor profile as we taste this and kind yeah, of talk about so like how you feel maybe sustainable viticulture kind of works towards what you get out of the grapes as we taste this. Um, so what, what, you know, what's really funny is one of the comments we hear very often is that you could taste the ocean in this wine and it's named that. ocean reserve. Mm -hmm. And, and there is a touch of salinity in, in, in the wine. Um, so again, hundred percent Chardonnay, no malolactic fermentation on it. Um, just over six grams per liter on, on residual sugar. Um, great taste of orange and lime. However, you do have a touch of uh, toasted almond like you would in, in an aged Blonde de Blanc, um, a touch of green apple on the nose, mm. um, creamy, rich, good and a long finish. It's, it's um, you know, me being from uh, Champagne and my family uh, growing a lot of Chardonnay there, I'm, I'm big on Blonde de Blanc. It's my favorite sparkling wine to make. Um, this is one of the best uh, domestic Blonde de Blanc. I've ever had. I obviously wasn't there at the time to create this wine, um, but when I tasted it, uh, when I first came aboard, I was blown away. Yeah, it's 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 wonderful. It has a wonderful mouthfeel. And Robert and Natalie, I'm so sorry. I wish you. I wish we could send you wines in New Zealand and France to, to taste this. Although I know it's 11 a.m. and like you know 1 a.m., but still, <laughs> it would be a wonderful time to always have sparkling wine, right? Um, Perfect well, time for both of us. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a beautiful wine. I just, uh, for me, you know, I, I do get the salinity that you're talking about. I love the texture of this wine. I think that it just has a, it's just a beautiful texture um, that sometimes you don't get from every Blanc de Blanc. And so, yes, uh, this might be one of my favorite um, Blanc de Blancs. Yeah, I believe it has a perfect balance of acidity and, and texture and creaminess. I, it's, it's just very well-rounded. It's something that you don't get a lot in, in domestic sparkling wines because you have regions that you're over at you have too much acid or not enough acid and I think this just has a perfect balance yeah that's beautiful and um do you know I mean I'm gonna ask you since we we missed out on Troy of um Barry and Audrey there any 
goals they had with with sustainability um, in creating their winery? Yeah, Earth Day and taking care of our planet is something that's in the forefront of their minds. That's mm -hmm. you know the one of the big things that they do, and they've always known um, that they were doing good practice for the earth, but they didn't know until a couple of years ago how big of an impact we actually had. And one of the big things that we've been doing for um, since 1990 is recycling water from a little village of Forestville right next to the winery. Um, so we take the recycled water and we use that for our um, uh, uh, frost protection program uh, mainly. Right. Yeah. But when we, when, when we got, we did an audit with a climate, pi uh, a climate pilot program and in, and that was in 2019, what we saw is that we were uh, sequestering carbon, uh, 200, met 200 metric tons of carbon sequestered in our land, which is massive. I think it equals something like 700,000 miles if you were driving a car. Wow. Um, and so they've been doing these practices, but they didn't know how important it was until mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, which is it's, uh, amazing. And things that we're doing now is, you know, we're not perfect. We're trying to be, we're trying to get better. We're trying to learn. Um, is we added Polar last year um, to our entourage warehouse where we age our sparkling wines. And so that's solar powered now. And, and we're continuing to look down different avenues as far as uh, carbon footprint at the winery, um, in the vineyard, uh, cover crop. Um, we have 39% of our property is Oaklands. So um, trying not to impact the environment too much with that, um, keeping its natural habitat, the animals and, and, and wildlife that, that exists with that is, is very important to us as well. Yeah, yeah, I think that I love that you pointed that out um, of just how much water wineries use and kind of being aware of that and how to recycle it. So I'm, I'm glad that was kind of one of the first, first things you do. Well, this wine is delicious. Thank, um, you. thank you so much. Thank um, you. So we are going to move from the Green Valley to uh, New Zealand with the Yeelands. Um, Natalie, thank you so much for being here. Um, great to see you. I love, it's kind of interesting. Everybody's kind of time zone is different. I think I'm the only one that's actually at an hour where I'm supposed to be drinking, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but um, Natalie, great to see you. And um, I would love if you could kind of start off a little bit, you know, talking about the foundation of Yeelands in 2008 and what was its mission. We're going to show a few shots. So if anything stands out to you being like, oh, that's this, just jump on in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of today. And a virtual welcome to New Zealand to everyone, to everyone who's who's on the on this um, on the slide. Um, so Yellen's opened on the 8th of the 8th, 2008. Um, and our founder, Peter Yellen's, it was his mission to be one of the most sustainable uh, wineries in the world. And we were the first winery to be certified carbon zero from inception. Peter, he's a very interesting character. He's a, definitely a man of the land. Um, he isn't, he's an ambassador now. He doesn't actually work within the business, but he was very much a pioneer and he had a lot of crazy kooky ideas. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, but one of the initiatives that he did bring in, which, which was successful for us, was um, the baby dog sheep. So they're a, a miniature. Yeah. Dog. They're so <laughs> cute. Yeah, they are. So you can see they have a beautiful, almost like a little smile on their face. Yeah. But this, this breed, uh, they're actually too short to, to reach the, the fruiting zone and damage the vines. So oh. we can graze these sheep um, all year round, um, as opposed to just during the period when we don't have growth on the vines. Uh, so that reduces our need for, um, for tractor use and sort of mowing. Um, but a lot of the other things that have been introduced over the years, so we've been going for 13 years now, which is, is very young, but it's always been uh, our, in our DNA and pretty much what drives us as a business. So we've got the one of the largest solar panel installations in yeah, New Zealand. Was that, was that um, the winery picture we just saw? Was that the... Yeah. Um, so that's on, that our, our, on the whole side of our north-facing um, side of the winery. So that's... Yeah where we get the maximum sun. In so the northern hemisphere, we're nor I mean, southern side. So that makes sense. Because it was like, yeah, so yeah. Southern, northern <laughs> side and southern. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so we also have wind turbines. And those mm -hmm. two combined 
give us around about 30% of our, our power needs. And so obviously in the, the sun's helping grow our vines and grow our fruit, but then it also helps us power our computers and our pumps and hoses within the winery and gets things rolling. Um, we also, so basically the site, we're based in the Awateri Valley in Marlborough. Mm -hmm. There are two main valleys and our valley is a little bit more southern and a little bit cooler. And as you would have seen in the pictures, we're right on the coast. And our vineyard actually name is the, the, the Sea View Vineyard. It's incredibly scenic. We're situated right at the top of the South Island of New Zealand. And there's a stretch of body, a body of water that stretches between the North and the South known as Cook Strait. And on a clear day, you can see over, over the harbour to Wellington, which is our, our capital city. Um, yeah. But it's yeah. incredibly beautiful um, prior to Peter developing the land, there was actually a lot of um, sheep farms there and very dry, sort of desolate landscape. And he developed 25 different wetlands around the property. And over the years, we've planted over 80,000 native plants. And yeah, it attracts a lot of native bird life. And it's just an incredibly beautiful environment um, to work in. Uh, we also have an area of the vineyard known as Butterfly Gully. Where, okay. um, I, just, I saw one of those photos, I saw a bunch of butterflies, which was... Yeah, which was yes, so um, it's a part of the vineyard that's not very good for growing grapes, it's in quite a sort of steep gully, and we planted that up with um, swan plants, and during, during the right sort of time in the season, we get hundreds of monarch butterflies flying around, and we were one of the first organisations to be certified butterfly friendly, and that was a certification granted to us by the New Zealand Moths and Butterflies Trust. Um, yeah, and also you can see we've got a lot of cover crops and mm -hmm. um, wildflowers, and those wildflowers, they actually attract beneficial predator bugs to our vineyard, so helps us with our, our pest control. But it's an ever-evolving thing, the sustainability thing, mm -hmm. and we're constantly looking for new ways. And we've actually got um, an in-house initiative called the Sustainability Pipeline, so all members on staff can put together, put forward any ideas that um, they think, because quite often it's the people working on the ground who can see ways for um, improvement and yeah, any any initiatives that get the green tip, they get support and sort of, yeah, to see yeah. those through. And so we are, and we're tasting a Pinot Noir from this area, the Marlboro, and so do you find that it's easy, hard, neither to, to have Pinot Noir in a sustainable environment? It can be kind of a finicky grape. Is that is it something that thrives when you're doing all these wonderful things with the, the ground and the cover crops and the sheep? Yeah, Pinot Noir, I mean, that's the beauty of Pinot Noir. It is such a, a fickle variety. Um, but yeah, it does really help. So the, the cover crops between the vines give us, um, help us with our soil structure and the retention of, of water and um, yeah, so it does all these sustainability and sort of land enhancing things that we're, we're doing does definitely help the, the very fickle and naughty little variety, which is Pinot Noir. But when, when it does play ball, it does create an incredibly beautiful wine. Yeah, it's one of those when it's very good, when it's good, it is very, very good. When it, when it is bad, it is naughty, something like that. Childhood rhyme of some sort. Um, so let's taste through the wine. If you could kind of talk us through a little bit about the, you know, just the flavor profile as the winemaker and maybe how it reflects Marlboro and, and your specific place and sustainability practices. That would be great because I love this. I love this nose. I also oh. actually had a few sips too, but it's. <laughs> uh, well, it's, yeah, it's interesting to be actually showing a pen and noir today because obviously most people who know, know about New Zealand and know about Marlboro, Sauvignon Blanc is the, the champion and sort of the showy, Showy lady, I guess. Um, yeah. But Pinot Noir, so we're a, a cool climate growing country. Uh, so that's why Sauvignon Blanc does so well where we are. And mm -hmm. a, a lot like Sauvignon, like we have very warm days, but very cool nights. So we retain a lot of natural acidity, which is perfect for Sauvignon, but also perfect for Pinot Noir, because Pinot Noir is also known as a cool climate variety. Uh, where we are, um, out on the coast at, at, at Seaview Vineyard, we tend to get a lot of bright fruits, a lot of cherry, um, raspberry, a lot of sort of spicy characters coming through. Uh, but we also have some vineyards deeper up, up the Arwateri Valley in Marlborough, which is on sort of a stony river terrace. And up there, we get very structural, deep, broody styles. So we find the wines that we're creating out of the Arwateri Valley um, are very layered. There's lots of different <laughs> aromatics going on. They're very complex. 
uh, but also with a beautiful elegance. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a total convert for New Zealand Pinots um, from Central Otago, Martinborough, Marlboro. I, I love them, but this this does have a distinctive difference from other Marlboros that I've had because it has that that like you said that that layered savory almost undertone that I'm getting. That usually it's more bright, which I also enjoy the bright cherry and everything. But this has kind of that almost meaty kind of savory thing going on under that bright fruit and beautiful. So this is fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing um, this wine. It is beautiful and um, for doing such great things in New Zealand. So um, I know it's a, yeah, it's, yeah, maybe as soon as you start letting us in, that'll be even better. <laughs> we want to come visit. Oh, we're so good to have you guys here. Yeah. I know, I know what we do. One day, one day we'll all be able to, to travel and see each other. So um, thank you again. So now we are going to the south of France and Chateau Maris. Um, Robert, welcome. Wonderful to see you, always. Good um, morning. Good morning to you. Yes, um, Robert's staying up late. He's uh, pushing yeah. through um, through the early a.m. And um, but you know, Chateau Maris. Um, I've been there. Beautiful place. Um, and La La Vinière. It's near Carcassonne. If people are kind of familiar with it, it's in the Languedoc of France. But Robert, what what? Um, this is so beautiful there, but what kind of drew you into this region to make wine? Um, well, in, in, initially it was actually not going to make wine. It was looking for Chardonnay. I, I was in Burgundy at the time, asked to go by a, um, a, an American, Californian-based importer actually, to go and find some Chardonnay, which was a little cheaper than the, what, what, what he was finding in Burgundy. And Limoux down in the Languedoc is this very famous region for growing Chardonnay. And I'd never been to the Languedoc. I've been to Bordeaux, I've been to the Loire, I've been to Bondol, Le Côte d'Oron. I had a very privileged time of visiting the vineyards of France, but never been to the Languedoc. I arrived in this place and it is literally textbook France. You've got, um, you know, stray dogs walking down the middle of the street. You've got old men and old ladies on the bench. And, you know, occasionally you've got that chap in the local cafe who's had a couple too many as well. And it, it, it's just a very beautiful area. You've got the, the, the Mediterranean Sea, you've got the Pyrenees Mountains, you've got this extremely sparsely populated area, um, uh, lush Garrigue, a very, a very lush, uh, wild ecosystem full of herbs and plants and scents and, 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 and wildlife. So I, yeah, I, I, I wanted to stay and w w was fortunate enough a few years after the first visit to come across uh, 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 Chateau Maris in, in Cru La Livigniere. That's beautiful. And, and Chateau Maris is, is fully biodynamic. So what drew you to that method of farming? Well, the, um, I, I, the necessity. <laughs> um, it, it, it was, uh, it was, uh, uh, and, and I think it's necessary for us all, by the way. And just listening a little bit to the other, to the other two people uh, uh, talking, it sort of sounds like on this show that that the whole world is organic or all viticulture is organic. We must remember on this day, Earth Day, that I think of only about ten percent of the world's vineyards are organic. Um, so that's not enough, um, and there needs to be a lot more. And um, yeah, the the I was tasting grapes. I always taste grapes backed up by uh, analysis, but I always taste grapes at harvest time. And 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 these grapes in 1998, which is a very good vintage in the Languedoc, didn't taste too good. And so I had to ask the question: well, Why aren't they tasting good? What, what what's going on? Anyway, somebody told me: Have you checked your soil? And I said: What are you talking about? Have I checked my soil? I mean this south of France. I mean, we've grown vines down here for more than a thousand years, you know, they live together naturally. What's the problem? And, and uh, yeah, the people said to me, no, 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 look at your soil. And I, I, in studying the soil, I realized that the chap before me had been using large quantities of chemical fertilizers, large quantities of pesticides, and he just forced the soil to death. And, 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 and the plants themselves were actually sick and therefore producing bad tasting grapes. And so we discovered the, the, the biodynamic method by necessity of rejuvenating life back into our soil to help our grapes have a, a healthy environment in which to grow, the vines, healthy environment in which to grow. Yeah, how, how, long that, how long did that take just to go from just 
real quick, like how that well, the, officially it takes three years. Yeah. Um, but but I, I really think that that uh, that anybody who'd been you know when you start tasting grapes a lot in the vineyards and you get to know the vineyards, you get to know the exchange which is there, you get to feel the sense of place. It's really seven years before there's a sort of a fit. Uh, you, you understand that things yeah. are starting to work, and you're saying, "Wow, this is good." Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's 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 easily it's easily a seven year process. But obviously, depending on you know at the bottom the amount of residue which the soil has actually collected and the the the, the level of sickness and uh, of the plant itself. Yeah. Um, there's a lot that goes into biodynamics, um, which, which we've actually done a show for that, but at least show, um, we had a photo up there of the, of the horse, you know, you have just all this, just focus on so many natural, natural um, things going on in the vineyard. And also, um, so can we see the horse again? Just <laughs> plowing, plowing through rather than a tractor. So the horse coming through, which is just much more natural for the vineyard. And then the other thing that I was going to ask you about was that um, this is the like this is I'm so excited to hear about this. But the, your winery was built completely using hemp blocks. So can you tell us the benefit of of that material in in building a winery? Should we all build our homes like that? I don't know. Oh, there you are. Here's the winery yes. from well, It's um. Yeah, I mean, what you said about the horse and, and, and other things. It's not just the horse. It's a, it's it's about live life matter. Um, biodynamics is all about re respecting what goes on around you. Um, and it's all about uh, trying to incorporate all living things, uh, uh, um, animal and vegetable, uh, and, and to consider them and to, and to realize that we can't dominate that. We're just, we're just part of that. Um, and so we're working with that as much as possible. So considering all that, one of the things we really wanted to do was, was build a, a, a vegetable building, build a, a, a a building which had plant-based, plant-based building. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was it, it, it was really a, 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 a neutral space uh, in 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 which the uh, fermenting fruit uh, uh, can develop its, its its own energy all by itself. It, it's not infused by any external energies. And um, yeah, so we came across this uh, material, which is the, the 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 straw of hemp, which we mixed with lime, and we created that brick, which you just showed. Um, and yeah, we've got a hundred percent recyclable building, which is a, a carbon negative building. And uh, yeah, it's a very, uh, a very basic to build. It's a very basic structure, but it, it works. And it's a beautiful place to be in from a human point of view. It has a very good, uh, very good acoustic. It's a very good uh, air quality. We use no air temperature control systems. But that's what I was going to ask is that, does it keep it cool? Does it keep it warm? How does, how does the airflow work? Well, it, 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 it actually is a brick which breathes, but we 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 cheated a little bit by uh, by building uh, uh, two walls um, because the actual raw material was cheap enough for us to build two walls and still keep the building inside industrial standards, and um, and 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 it's that sort of the, the gap between the two walls and the bricks breathing which uh, uh, allows this air control um, through 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 natural methods, which is great when you're aging wines in barrel and you, you you don't want to infuse too much dry air into your barrel cellars uh, you, you it's nice to have a good humidity so that the relationship between the juice and the wood remains uh, in, in a balanced state so um yeah it's a, it's a, it's a great great building That's and we, i love we, that you said you were cheating because you used two walls <laughs> well yeah, yeah. The building but, made it i'm not sure how that's cheating on anything but okay well, we could we we could we could have used one wall and it still would have worked, but it it was it was it's a good security to build the second one and it's a it's a it's a totally recyclable building, huh? So we knock it all down and we we could give the bricks back to the vineyard and the 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 soil would be very happy. So yeah, um, that's and that's that's amazing. So having double that is really wonderful. Yeah. So also just um, well, we can everybody can start drinking the wine, by the way. But I did want to also um, and maybe we'll talk about the wine first and then talk about the B core. But this wine is uh, La, to La Touche. La Touche, yeah. La Touche. La Touche the, okay, La Touche. Yeah, so it's La, La Touche. Touche. Um, so this is primarily Syrah with a little bit of Grenache or yeah, half half. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen mixed percentages as we've looked this wine up. So it depends on the year, but it's, it's always a Syrah Grenache blend. Yeah. 
And, and, and this is the 2017, which is a, a more Syrah than Grenache, about 60% Syrah, 40% Grenache. And the Syrah comes from a, a vineyard, which is called La Touche. That's why, uh, uh, that's why the, the, the cuvee, if you like, is called La Touche. I like to name uh, 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 the, the wines from where they predominantly come from. I just feel that that's a little bit giving a little bit of respect back to the place. Um, yeah, and uh, 2017 hot vintage. This is this is um, this is basically uh, yeah. You just um, take the afternoon off. <laughs> <Yeah>, absolutely. <yes. laughs> or or the morning. I mean, aren't you going to pull? Or the morning, or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, but tell us a little bit about how, how the flavor profile that comes out through this wine might reflect some of those practices, those biodynamic practices you use in the vineyard. You know, do you, do you yeah. get the wine? I think the the, the 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 biodynamic practice it's 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 in in the flavor it's it's allowing the whole space itself to 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 exist. So how that is impacting is is really uh, yeah from its. Uh, from its state to me, it's a, um, it's it's a it's a it's got a hot, velvety, uh, and and then you can almost get a bit sort of warm stone coming through, and then there's some then there's some herbs, then there's some you know that that, that rosemary, deep dark, uh, uh, a bright rosemary, and, and and all that. So to me, yeah, it's. Um, it's very much from where it is. I mean, this is why I said take the afternoon off. It's, it's very much sort of lying down in the middle of a of, of a warm, grassy nature area. You know, uh, sort of uh, yeah, some pine trees uh, uh, blowing in the wind above you. Yeah, the, the greed, You know, the, the greed, uh, exactly. I love that. I love that word from just being in France a few times. But yeah, this is just it sucks in all that smell. Um, my kids have been to France, and sometimes they'll be somewhere, and they're like, oh, "This smells like France." And I'm like, yeah. yes, yes, it does. And like, yeah. that's kind of what this is. Like, oh, this smells like where it's from, which is um, yeah. a true reflection of the place. I think all these wines do that with the salinity and that that uh, savory yet bright cherry from New Zealand and then um, this from the Greek and herbs. So it's beautiful. Um, yeah. So uh, B Corp, what, what is that? Because you were the first winery to become a... Uh, Certified B Corps, I have no idea what that means. What does that entail? What does that represent? The B Corps is a certification process which was uh, uh, set up in the United States to help businesses uh, uh, um, find ways of doing business for good. Um, so it's, it's, it's predominantly uh, considering your communities whilst you're actually uh, doing your professional activity. Very often we can uh, isolate ourselves. Very often we see people uh, creating their businesses inside these business parks, business blocks, uh, business campuses, uh, absolutely ignoring the greater community which is surrounding them, which is vital to their existence um, as well as vice versa. And Bico helps you uh, as a company really um, connect with that. And at the same time, it, 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 it guides you into your relationships with your employees. And we, we have 20 permanent people working for us and I thought I knew them very well. It's a very small group. Um, Actually, but but after uh, following the B Corp certification process, I, I really got to know my employees. And that's that's really rewarding, and 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 they say it's rewarding for them as well, thankfully. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I have a I have a much better relationship with my employees, and 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 vice versa than than, than we did before uh, joining B Corp. So B Corp is, is a wonderful tool. It's a wonderful certification yeah. process. I highly recommend it. Evidently, it concentrates on, on on the environment, but it also concentrates on the the people okay. environment, the community. And, and, and your employees, the people you work with. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a great tool. And we're very, yeah. very proud to work hard. And, and, and what I also enjoy about it is that it forces you to get better. And as Natalie was saying, you know, we, we, we're still learning. We're looking for new ways of doing things. We're, we're all in this living ecosystem, which is constantly changing. So we have to adapt to the way that it changes as well. And, and, and that's another good thing about the B Corp tool is that uh, it requires you to get better. You, you, you will not be recertified if you haven't made progress. And um, it's a great thing. That's good. And I, I know from researching also Elins as well as Iron Horse that their approach to sustainability is also that it's not just the environment, but it's the community. It's people that work for you. It's the community that's around you. 
it's all of those people that is included in what, what you're trying to do to, to kind of be sustainable, I guess, if, if you will. So those are all wonderful things. So delicious wine. Thank you. I, I want to kind of wrap up with one question. I think you could all touched on a little bit, but maybe just one thing that kind of might stand out to you of, of what might be something, an important thing, not the most important, but something that you really think that other wineries producers can be doing, maybe a piece of advice of what can you do, what, or what have you done um, that you think is impacting, um, benefiting the earth, I guess, and our, our ecosystem and our climate as we're, you know, we're facing climate change. So what are you doing or what is your biggest piece of advice as uh, kind of a convoluted question um, that, that you could share, um, you know, that I guess to, to give to what other wineries and producers might be able to tackle. So, um, Sophia, I'll start with you on that. Um, mine's simple. Um, you know, we went over kind of the things that we we're doing here at Iron Horse. Quite simply, be stewards of our land. Let's let's take care of of what we were given. That way, our future generations, like my one year old son, um, has the same benefits and and same opportunities as I have, and 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 the people my grandfather and and my uncle and my parents had, and and whether it changes in five, 10 years and what we need to do to, to, to take care of our planet, that's what we need to do and, and, and continue to uh, push forward and research and, and improve um, to leave it better than what we were given. Yeah. What we tell our children, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Natalie, what about you? What are, what are things that you kind of learned at Elands that might be something other wineries producers can kind of take on? Yeah, well, one thing that we've really um, come to, not to realise, but one thing we can see that we can really help um, is share what we have learnt and help support our local community. So we've started a Yearland Sustainability Initiative, which um, helps financially uh, non-for-profit organisations in the local area to do environmental enhancements or yeah, support sustainability ideas. So we've had given out 12 grants now and yeah, it's sort of just extending that further than just our winery and our estate, it's our whole community and our whole local Marlborough environment that we want to support and see see well into the future. Good, sharing the love. And Robert, you spoke a little bit to that, but is there anything else that you've kind of either learned or wanted to kind of push out to other people to do? Yeah, I think if you've got a, if you've got a vineyard today, and uh, you're interested in, in taking a step towards more responsible methods of culture, uh, plant some cover crops. It's nice to plant something else in, in, in the vineyards. Uh, uh, I know the other two vineyards do this. Uh, we do it as well. Um, it's good to get that relationship going. Good to have more plants uh, in right, the vineyard. Exactly, yeah. Is Robert there? Did he go? Hello? Okay. Um, well, yes, plants in the vineyards. Those are wonderful things as well. Um, so yeah, so is everybody, is, did everybody freeze? Okay, well, thank you. Everyone, is everybody, is everybody there? Oh my God. <laughs> I had a kid walk in, you froze. There was like all sorts of chaos, right? At one time. Um, welcome to life. Okay. So um, <laughs> Robert, did you want to finish that one sentence? Or yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure where I finished, but just uh, <laughs> love the birds and the bees and the flowers and the plants and enjoy biodiversity, enjoy enjoy activating other species, enjoy activating life around uh, daily what you do. Uh, 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 cultivate without looking down, cultivate also looking around. That's, uh, right. that's the way I go. That's I like that, just cultivate without looking down, looking around, so. Um, well, thank you all so much for being here, sharing these beautiful wines. I mean, they're all fantastic. If you didn't have a chance to purchase them beforehand, they're still available on wine.com and they're really um, all quite amazing, awesome, delicious. 
Um, but yeah, I appreciate you all being amazing stewards of our planet while also, again, making fantastic wines for us to enjoy. So cheers um, to all of you. Happy Earth Day and uh, appreciate your time and your stories. Thank you. Thank you. It's both a science and a form of high art. It's made from the combination of grapes, sunlight, rain, soil, and time. It's raised up in the moments that matter. It's wine. And we are wine.com. We have the largest wine selection in the world, online sommeliers with free advice, and now our powerful new app puts the entire world of wine in your hands. Wine.com, seriously passionate about wine. Download our free app today.